Um, yeah, they're a great defensive team, just like a lot of teams in the Big 12. Um, tried to definitely pressure us a lot on the ball. Um, we just didn't always do the best job of you know attacking and, and getting to the paint like we said we would. Um, the opportunities were there. We just didn't do it every time. Um, you know, we kind of started out uh, kind of the way we wanted to. Um, then they went on a little run, and we went on another run, I believe cut it to three. Um, but then from that point on, we, we just kind of didn't execute the scouting report and, you know, allowed O'Banner to get loose, and they started hitting shots, and that's kind of when, you know, the tide changed for us in the first half. There were, there were some effort plays throughout the course of the game uh, where they got a couple. One guy got rebounds over three or four people. What are the conversations like on the bench when those types of events happen? Um, those are just things that, you know, are unacceptable for us in this program. That's not something that, you know, we should be allowing to happen. That's not something that, you know, we pride ourselves on. That's not something that the coaches coach us to do. So um, that's definitely a, a lot of missed opportunities that we had in this game and something that can't happen going forward. Nick in the back left. Yeah, Marcus, they had uh, 14 points off turnovers in the first half. I know turnovers have been sort of a recurring issue for you guys in the whole. Why does that seem to be sort of a theme these last few games? Y'all just, especially early on, aren't really holding on to the ball as well. Uh, yeah, like I said, you know, the Big 12 is a great um, <laughs> defensive league. I think you're seeing that by the numbers. Every single team is pretty sure nationally ranked and in, in, in causing people to turn over the ball, in, including us. So um, it's just something that we have to continue to focus on, something that the coaches are you know, getting on us about, and we just have to really take that in and, and, and go out and execute. Yeah, just you think so Marcus did a great job with that tonight, though, right? Four assists, no turnovers uh, against one of the best defenses in college basketball that was game planning for him. So Marcus is 16 points and four assists, no turnovers, a lot of courage, a lot of respect for this guy. I love you, Coach. It was no secret what tonight was going to be. You know, Coach and everybody on the staff prepared us for what this was. Um, we knew that this is a great environment, regardless of you know the outside situation or whatever. We were prepared for it. You know, it, it came at us last night. It wasn't nothing that you know was new to us or we weren't expecting. It was a great environment. You know. Credit to the fans, they, they do a great job. And um, it was very fun to play in, to be honest. You know, these are the kind of games you want to play in growing up as a kid. So um, it was definitely a great experience. Obviously, didn't end the way we wanted it to, but. Chip, front left, we'll take two more, Marcus. Yeah, Marcus, just following up on that, what was the mindset after last night, the craziness outside your bus? What was the mindset of the guys, you know, coming out into this atmosphere? It's nothing different, you know, from day one, from when I spoke to coach and when I got on campus, did a great job explaining to me that, you know, this is Texas and we're the most hated school, not only in the Big 12, but probably in the country. So wherever we go, you know, that's what it is. And like I said, we were expecting this. It wasn't nothing new to us. Um, we kind of get that everywhere we go. So when it happened, it happened. We soaked it in. It was what it was. Last one for Marcus. Go ahead, Marcus. Just how much did y'all want this for coach coming back here and everything that went into this? Um, a lot, you know, um, definitely for me, you know, I know how much, um, just how much coach supports me and has my back and, you know, all of us, how much he fights for us every day and how much he works, you know, just hard, even harder than we do, you know, as a coach and it's definitely the hardest working coach I've ever had in my life. So, you know, stepping between these lines every single game, but, you know, especially this one, knowing, you know, the things that were surrounding him and not just him, his family and stuff like that. I, I really wanted to lay it on the line for him tonight. So, um. That's one of the best parts of coaching when you get to coach guys like Marcus. I've been fortunate. I've coached guys everywhere I've ever been, you know, that had my back. And um, no, Marcus is special. He's one of the best players in college basketball. Played well tonight. Joe, was there a point between the, in the first half between the under 16 and under 12 where like the first wave of crowd noise and their first run momentum? You didn't choose to call timeout. Why, why didn't you? Yeah, I've never been a coach to call many timeouts when I have a veteran team with players I trust. So, um, you know, you got to have those timeouts late in the game if you need them. Um, so, you know, tonight's game, we uh, this was the, what, ninth game in the 
18 round fight, so we make the turn here early February. We gave ourselves a chance tonight. I thought we withstood the emotional start to the game. You know, we were right there after four or five minutes. Um, first half, we got a stretch. We sure would have liked to get back. Um, in the second half, well, we cut cut it to six a couple times, and you know, we were right there. So, um, in games like this, you know, got to have some great individual performances. And I thought Texas Tech's uh, three or best four players, in my opinion, all played great tonight. Um, and so we had some individual performances too, but I think they had some guys that really played well. Obviously, Kevin McCullers, 15 free throws. Kev's a, a special player. Um, and then Kevin uh, got loose on some three-pointers. Give him credit for some of those. Some of those were missed assignments, but give him credit. Uh, he's a really good player. Um, so they had some great individual performances. Uh, but I thought our guys were gritty. We were right there. We got some great shots tonight, open looks. Um, basketball is a game of making shots. You know, when you make them, it's a lot easier. Uh, so we'll go back and, and look at it. But I, I do think from where I was sitting and standing tonight, we got some good looks. Um, and so we'll just have to, you know, work on our shooting as the season goes on. Yeah, tonight wasn't about me, guys. Uh, I'm on the record my whole career. And uh, you guys understand that I respect the opponent and I respect the game. And so tonight wasn't about me. I congratulate Texas Tech on a, on a good home win in the Big 12. Uh, had a great crowd tonight. Uh, student attendance uh, was noticeable. And um, yeah, I, just, I thought it was a good college basketball game. We wish we would have played better. Um, but it wasn't for the lack of effort. Our guys battled tonight, uh, but tonight wasn't about me. Timmy was a little, you know, struggled early, and you're looking for, you know, your best players to be your most aggressive players. What were you telling him to kind of get him going? Uh, I'd go, go back and watch the film before I uh, specifically talk about <clears throat> possessions and things like that, but uh, Timmy's heart was in the right place. Uh, Timmy Allen's a competitor. Really good player. Um, you know, he was dialed in tonight as a leader. Uh, look, we all wish we would have played better. So uh, this wasn't on one player tonight. Uh, this was Texas Tech, a really good team, um, defending their home court in an early February conference game, uh, you know, with a, with a great environment tonight. Yeah, a little bit of all of uh, – what's that deal called? All of the above. Um, yeah, I was, had a weird thought there. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we knew it was going to be an emotional game. Um, we knew it was going to be, uh, you know, get guys trying to get to their second and third wins quickly. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we extended the bench a little bit more tonight uh, within the game plan. And I thought I thought guys did well. No, today, tonight was a good basketball game. Front left, far left. Yeah, Chris, you guys have done a great job on the boards, and uh, tonight Tech was able to get that part of you. Uh, I, I know you concentrated on that. With, uh, did you think that was a key to not being able to make that complete comeback when you got down to six? Yeah, no question. I think uh, untimely uh, offensive rebounds given up and untimely three-pointers given up. You know, we had some runs. We were – we were we were uh, we were buckling in, you know. We we uh, we were playing well in stretches, you know, and um, just had a miss block out here, maybe a miss assignment there. Uh, but I thought more than just the overall rebounding and the overall three point defense, just some untimely mistakes. But that's basketball, you know. Basketball is a game of spurts, um, you know. In in this home court here at Texas Tech, uh, these fans do a great job helping their team in spurts. Uh, so we expected that. Get to the free throw line more. No, I understand the question. Uh, I don't think we got there at all in the first half. 
And then on the second half, we flipped the script and got there, what, 19 times? Is that right? I don't have my readers. Uh, yes, and coach, um, it's a playing in this kind of environment, no matter how much stretch you out, it's always going to be tough for the players. But y'all came out in the second half and uh, made a little bit of a run on them. What did you tell your players at halftime to try to get them to lock them in and focus them? Just stay the course. Long game, 40 minute game. Um, we didn't love the position we were in at halftime, uh, but stay the course. A lot of confidence. We get back in the game. It's exactly what we did. Cut it to six. Um, got a chance. Um, different ways, uh, di different times in the game where you can win a game, and different times in the game where you can lose a game. And there was a couple segments in that first half that we got to we got to do better. Uh, then I thought in the second half where we had them, you know, kind of where we could. Uh, throw a punch or two and make it really interesting. We had some just untimely uh, plays. Uh, but give Texas Tech credit. Uh, give their players credit. Uh, they played really well tonight. They protected their home court in an early February Big 12 battle. Had a sold-out crowd tonight. Uh, so I don't think it was necessarily, you know, all about what we didn't do. I think you got to respect the opponent um, and give them credit as well. Yeah, he played. Uh, he played well, man. His heart was on his sleeve tonight. He was dialed in. Uh, you know, I had the pleasure of coaching Marcus Santos Silva here, um, and, and Marcus does those things. Uh, Marcus had a great game tonight. Uh, um, recognize him, and I uh, thought CB uh, brings that to our team. CB has a lot of roles on our team. He's a skilled player that can play different positions, but uh, one of the things that CB brings is just his fight and his heart. Uh, he's a hard-playing, competitive guy. Uh, that cares about each possession. Uh, he's fun to coach. Uh, Bishop's a really good player. He's I'm having a ball coaching him. He's one of my all-time favorite guys, and we're only a, a couple months into this deal. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.